going to go to camera one. Hey there, everyone. Hi. So glad to have you here today. On Friday. We, yeah. We hope you're having a great day up until now. We hope you're having a great morning or day or uh, evening, wherever you're from. And we're really glad that you join us for our second edition of um, our feedback mm. round. So what are we going to do today? Um, today we're going to correct your sketches. Yes. So our main goal is just to share your work, uh, see what you've drawn in the past, and then we're going to try our best to give you our best advice. Exactly. And we're really thankful for all of you who have sent our, uh, your sketches in. Thank you for the courage, courage to, um, you know, to want to get feedback on your work. And for everyone who's just watching, I think you'll get great value also from these tips because I think they apply in general. I mean, mm -hmm. I learned a lot from watching our professor correct, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the sketches from everyone else as well in the class. And um, if you're watching this at a later time, I, yeah, I hope you also get uh, a lot of value from this. I think you will. Yeah. So for everyone who's here for the first time, hi, my name is Sonia and this is Gaspar. Hello, welcome to Lionscapes. Yeah, we do tutorials and videos on creativity. And in the future, we're going to do much more. And the new addition to this is the live stream part. Yeah, where we actually love to connect with you, our community, um, and get this feeling of feedback from you directly and also be able to give you as much as we can of our knowledge. Especially in these times um, where we hopefully, you know, take your mind off other things and, uh, you know, maybe you have a chance or a bit more time to perfect one of your skills or just need like a creative outlet. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to share your work, um, as if what we're go what's going on, if you're if you're doing some tutorials of ours, or if you're doing uh, additional stuff when we're doing uh, live streaming, or if you would like to just get a feedback on your sketches, you can post them in our Instagram profile or on our Facebook group, Linescapers. Exactly. So. Um... I'll suggest let's look at who's here and then we'll dive into it and start with the first uh, first of the works that you send us. Yeah. Okay, so uh, hello, our community is growing. Here is awesome. Anne from Seattle. Hello, Anne. Uh, Michael from Arizona. Peter T from Chicago. Pamela. Uh, good night from Jakarta. Hey, Pamela. Um, Anna from Arizona. Mohan from India, Ratka, from Czech Republic. Hey Mohan, hey Ratka, nice to see you guys again. Cristina from Peru, Lima. Uh, wow. Luis is also here. Hey Luis. Uh, for Quen, uh, Ahmed, Daniel. Wow. Uh, live streams, uh, the live streams have been amazing. Thank you very wow. much. Thanks a lot. So um, do let us know, everyone, if the sound is okay, if the picture is okay, just start screaming. It's something that's not working. So we see and we can fix it. Sonia, the technical magician, will fix it. <laughs> Me? Okay. I'm going to do my one, best. You're one who figured out all the live streams, <laughs> so I'm really, um, really impressed. Okay. And there's more. Uh, there's also Michelle from Canada. Uh, Shuhail, Dom, um, Seth uh, from Ghana. Wow. Wow. Hey. Uh, Dom is from Brazil. So we have quite a mixture of nations. So nice. This is great. So, and if you have any friends or family members that also, you know, could benefit from um, getting, uh, seeing the tips on drawing and sketching, you know, do share this link with them right now. Maybe they can tune in mm. and, and join, or maybe they'll join in the next time. Yeah. And should we dive into it? Yes! All right, we'll just go into it. Okay, so Gaspar is going to be the wizard behind the Photoshop and I'm gonna read your questions and if you have any questions, please post them in our chat and we're gonna try to figure everything out and give you our best answer. Uh, hello to Leonora who also just joined. Okay, so... Um, I think you need to switch the, the view. Yes, 
so let me just get this working all right so let's dive into the Photoshop here and let's look at what you guys have sent us okay this is a great one um, I like it uh, because it's already a continuation of something <laughs> we talked about uh, in our last session so let me show you what the difference was so in the last session you sent us this and um, we, you know we gave you some comments on drawing the water in different in different um, depths and, and the, the trees we also corrected right yeah and this is um, what came out in the next round mm -hmm. I really like it so I think it's a it's gained depth and everything and I uh, still have some more um, suggestions that I think will be able to make this even better okay so the first one would be since this is a river scene I like how you you know basically use this horizontal texture for water um, maybe you could do a, do the lines a bit more wavy you know I maybe the last time I just drew like straight lines due to the limitations of Photoshop but I think you can give them a bit of a, a bit of a squiggle this will give it a, a more of a water like uh, feeling you know so horizontal parallel lines yeah. but a bit squiggly for water because we are always trying to imitate the surfaces that yeah. are there and we just need to make them so ab abstract that it's not overwhelming for us yeah. when we're drawing it so this is what I would say you know regarding this uh, water texture now the other thing which I think you could do here is basically um, differentiate the water st more strongly from the surroundings because this is the main feature so when you're drawing water and you're just drawing black and white you have basically two options first option is you make the water uh, the darkest feature of your drawing or you make it the lightest feature of your drawing and um, I think in this case you could go like for the darkest feature right I mean how, how would you do that basically you would uh, make all of your banks around here uh, darker right so you know maybe draw some more vegetation here mm -hmm. make this area here darker you know you already got this group of spruces I would continue with this um, this trees here this will also give it a nice another nice layer of depth right so and you already did some texture here I think you could you know continue doing this so we get this contrast from the river um, to the to the to the banks right mm -hmm. to the river banks so look at it if we do this the river suddenly becomes more readable, readable. Okay, and I have a tip for you here. For example, um, if you almost close your eyes, I think we one last time probably we already explained this trick, but if you almost close your eyes and everything be becomes very abstract or you have a feeling that everything's almost muddy, you can't recognize the, the fine lines anymore, then you will notice that the contrast play important part when you're watching at one painting or your sketch. And what you want to achieve in almost every sketch that you do is some sort of contrast. And just be cautious or aware that at the end you want to have this differentiation between the water surface and the river banks and the mountains and the background. And this is how you do it. So just close your eyes a bit so that the fine lines and details are not to be seen anymore. Just squint, or right? Just yeah. squint? Yeah, squint. And then you're going to see that's, that's how you measure if you have right amount of contrast in your drawing. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, let's look at the difference again. So this would be without it and this would be with this added contrast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's move to the next one. Let's move to the next one. Okay, so Daniel uh, asked, are you going to keep doing live streams in the future? What do you, that, what do you say, Gasper? Um, I think we definitely will. Yeah. I must say, I must admit, it's, it's been one of the most fun things we've done uh, with Lionscapes mm -hmm. because we have direct um, contact to you, our community. So we literally love it. I think we'll continue doing that even when we can all move around. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll not do them four times a week right now, mm -hmm. but I think we'll... What do you think? Well, I'm not so sure about it. I mean... Yeah, right. She loves it. 
<laughs> no, for sure. We're going to do live streams as well. Um, probably not so, uh, how do you say, high, not so so often, but uh, yeah, for sure we're going to do them as, uh, still. Yeah. Okay. So um, how this basically works is um, you send us sketches and we are not going to say who is it by, you know, whatever, like Anne from Chile. But you can still say in the comments, oh, that's mine, and then we can have a discussion. And you can ask additional questions, or you just stay silent and watch. Yeah. If you don't want to expose yourself, it's yeah. completely understandable. So here comes right a question. Wow, this is amazing. Is that an actual place? Uh, yeah, so if, hmm. if, the, if someone is here, please do tell us, because I love this. I love it. I mean, yeah. basically, I really really like this one. I have an interesting point, uh, maybe, yeah, something that everyone can benefit from. Um, so when you have like a complex view, which this is, and you have a lot of details, you have to lead the eye so the eye doesn't like wander around helplessly. I mean, the drawing is beautiful and I think a small addition will really make it shine even more. So what I just drew is like, you know, like an S line, how I s imagine the, the eye will be led through the drawing. You know, first you will see we we'll look down at this uh, dark spot here, and then you, we want to lead it in like an S-like form up here to this point of focus. So you can do this in several different ways, but I think right now we can, like, the same as in the drawing before, we can use some shading to use to do this. Because, you know, all this, this wall basically looks quite, uh, it, looks, it's, it looks good, but it looks a bit flat. Because you could, I think you could like always add some shading. Look at this. If I start adding shading, then suddenly you get, you understand that some parts of the wall are behind other parts, right? And I will use this shading, basically I think this needs a bit more dark here, to lead the eye all the way up here. So I just added here, you know, if I blend this back in, I just added a bit of shading that will lead us back up all the way to the um, to the top top element. So you know, basically just maybe adding some dark spots to these plants, you know, like in the corner, adding some shade to this to this wall texture. Yeah. What do you think, Sonia? Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> I would do the same. Maybe you just need to explain a bit more on why do you add those uh, dark spots. Mm -hmm. Um, we try to add them every time when we try to guide your eye to some direction, we try to add those small dark spots. And through that, your eye focus, focuses automatically on, on those small spots. And it, it guides, those small spots guide your eye automatically so that you can read it easily. So when you're trying to to set a story or try to say something, sometimes it's really nice to just emphasize the, the parts that you would like to mm. make more visible. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we have here a question. So this is the difference, yeah. Yeah, not uh, um, uh, other than Pilot Weevil Pen, what other brands do you use? <laughs> well, we're not so picky. Um, I must say that we use different kinds of brands. Uh, we also use Arteza before, uh, Moloto uh, we used before, and we try different stuff out. But we are pilot people, I would say. Yeah, we are pilot people. <laughs> are we talking about uh, fine liner, like pens, or are we talking like generally? General art, art stationery. Yeah. Um, okay. I will just continue here with the next one already. Yeah. Right? Okay, so um, I remember about this one. This is from Arizona, and I was basically I jumped right at the goat and said, "Wow, amazing! You have a goat in the garden, and uh, it's apparently a, a metal goat, but oh. still I like the goat." So we got a reference photo here in this one, so we can see what the drawing beneath is actually depicting, and it's this Beautiful. arc, I would say here, right? So if the author of the drawing is here, you can gladly speak up. Or remain silent if you choose to do so. Um, and yeah, this is the focus, I would say, in this image. Maybe maybe the goat as well. I like the goat. Um, this is what the eye is drawn to at first. And that's why also like I, the first thing I noticed was like, wow, you have a goat. <laughs> um, and when you're doing it in your drawing, I would say you 
would also focus on maybe something like that. So we see our arc here, right? And then the there is no goat. This is it's fine without a goat as well, but you could add a goat. In and German you would say unforschimt. <laughs> no, it's not unforschimt. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, what I wanted to say with the focus. First of all, it's a good idea to use the so-called rule of thirds. What do I mean by that? It's like I mean that you don't put your focus, focal point, in the middle, because that makes the that makes the composition static, but you put it on one third of your of your um, one third of your image, right? So, like, let's say if this if this was like if we divided this on thirds, you know, I just divided it roughly on thirds vertically, and like horizontally. You probably heard about the rule of thirds many times, everyone. You know, like, oh, use the rule of thirds; it will make everything nicer. It's not so simple, but it does help. It's a simple rule that does help a lot. Mm -hmm. So I just moved it here. So what I would do here basically is just continue. Uh, you know, with your um, with your drawing. Oh. Yeah, I would continue and you know draw. You have a lot of you have a big garden, so you can just continue in this direction and and basically expand your drawing, right? So you have your focal point on a third. What do you think, Sonia? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it looks <clears throat> better, and that would be also my suggestion. Mm. <clears throat> so this is the first thing uh, we could do. Anna, that's mine. I used watercolors from Schminke. Mm. Ah, I think that was. I'm not sure. Was that this one? Are we talking about this one or the one before? Thanks for discussing it. I cannot listen right now because I also have to be on a Zoom call. Huh. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hope your Zoom call is going well, but this is way more interesting. Yeah, for sure. This is way more. Is anyone else uh, also supposed to be working right now, like home office stuff, <laughs> and is watching us? <laughs> Let us know. It would be super funny to hear. So what I'm actually adding here is a bit more contrast to this... Um, to this focal point because this is also like we said before if you had a bit more shadow and textures look how this is basically coming out right so it's getting more visible and um, you know if we lead the eye up to it with adding a bit of these more darker yeah. shadings then suddenly this um, focus you know this is coming into focus can I just ask you one quick question how many sketches do we prepare did we prepare for today so for today we have, I think, about 15 sketches, 15, 15 to 20 sketches. We, for you, we, for those of you who sent in more than one, thanks a lot, but we'll probably just be able to cover one today. So we can, uh, you know, we can get to as many uh, as possible through. And um, I think Sonia might be thinking about setting me a time limit right now, which is also fun because I have to give you feedback in a certain time limit. Yes. So, um, as Last time. I'm gonna set the timer for two minutes per sketch. Right. Let me let me count for you how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, ninety, twenty, like twenty-three or something. Well Okay. Then <laughs> let's move. Let's move. Okay, everyone. so um I'm gonna give you for this one another thirty seconds because I think you spent two or you're just moving. Okay. I'm moving on. Okay. I'm moving on. You're moving on. I was about and to draw the start. goat, but yeah, you should finish the goat, um, dear author of the sketch. Okay, I love this one. This is a beautiful illustration, right? This is uh, really amazing. Um, and I think what we could do here is add more depth to these different layers. Um, it looks beautiful. The palm tree is wow. I love the texture. Um, what you could do is um, interchange a bit between dark and light layers. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was I was reading uh, our chat. Mm -hmm. So I just I was just saying that you know maybe we could like yeah. differentiate a bit between these different layers because uh, now we know, for example, that this is one wall. This is this is one wall. This is like a wall afterwards. 
and then you know when we have this house and um, we want to create this feeling of depth so maybe so maybe a bit a bit more shading but not in the same tone or in the same tone so that I, we're really transparent i would try to do you know different uh, <laughs> different values like going dark light dark light is usually a great idea um, to, to create depth but finish that goat Gasper <laughs> if we have time I will come back and do that goat I promise although my okay. goat my goat drawing skills are a bit rusty but other than that I really love this one I wouldn't yeah. add much more the composition it's spot-on it's uh, beautiful and I really like the color scheme yeah great job okay Let's move to the next one. Okay, we have a pencil drawing wow. over here, people. And I think this is a design um, um, for a building. So, basically, um, when we draw landscapes, um, one thing that we tend to forget is that there is always like a horizon somewhere in mm -hmm. the back, right? There's always something um, in the back that is actually visible beyond the trees so you know behind those trees i think you could still add you know more like pr there probably is something there like even you know there's another layer of hills or forest or whatever and i think this is something you should also uh, fill in look at it just by adding this it will already make first of all it will frame and make your building that you designed um stand out more um, <clears throat> well, I think that's, that's, that's a good suggestion, what you just recommended, but maybe um, I would just add that try to be as light as possible, because I think this, this sketch is really beautiful in a sense that it's very light. It works almost as an illustration, for it could be also for a book or something, because of these trees and the fine lines and the... And I would really focus on just adding the the fine lines in the background that emphasize there is something in the background. It's not like the cut edge behind the building, there's nothing more. Um, because I think this, this graphic has certain qual quality already. Yeah, it does. I like it. So let's look at it without, without this and with the background has more context, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good job on this one. Let's move on. All right, wow, nice. I like this one. Wow. I like the line, the squiggly line. Mm -hmm. Looks good. If the author happens to be around, you can speak up and uh, tell us what it is. I'd be interested. Um, what is this uh, building? So what does everyone else think about it? You can also give feedback. It's nice to give feedback to your fellow. So, Christian, this is mine. All right. Hi. <laughs> okay. So um, I like the bit of exaggerated perspective. Um, and yeah, I think what I would do with this one is just add a little bit of context. What do you think? Yeah, I would do the same. Yeah, because uh, it's... I mean, I'm basically... It's basically the same as before, like it will give your drawing a bit more context if you, you know, if you draw behind, there's probably a, you know, these lines that you started are probably also the next building down the road and something's over here and you know, these trees, I like, you know, you can always frame your building with trees if it's imaginary, just add more trees. That's Try add here another line. Here? Here, like here, add here one. Oh yeah, 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 like this? Yeah. Yeah. So this is also like, think about the horizon. There is always something on the horizon, right? So your horizon is basically, I think, according yeah. to your perspective, something, something like that. No, I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, like a line here. Mm -hmm. So this is H for horizon. And so, yeah, you can always add something, you know, some trees here that go to the horizon. I think this will give it more, more yeah. context. For sure. But I think the main focus was this object. That's why we wouldn't add too much of details, like additional cars and yeah. vegetation would no. be like really more the outline as yeah. something else. Yeah. Because we still want this object to be like this part of architecture to be the main focus. Yeah. Okay, next one. All right, so let's look at it without. 
Banff and with the context. I hope you I hope you can get something from that. So basically you guys sent us different kinds of um, drawings and I must say for like sketches like environments, nature um, and basically scenery I think we got a lot of experience in that. Yeah. Um, and you also sent us a couple of other kind of uh, drawings and paintings and we'll definitely give you feedback on that but just you know so that you know it's not like necessarily our uh, field of expertise but we'll do our best um, best to give you feedback okay so this is the is this from Corbusier it's from Corbusier like Villa Savoy I think I think this Let's is the this is the thing correct us if, if it's not and there are many good things about this sketch, I would say. Like, I really like that the, the horizon is, you know, made dark. So the, the, the yeah. Villa, uh, Villa Savoia or Savoie or... I, I don't know how you pronounce it, but I know which one it is. Savoy. Savoy. Yeah. Here. So I would just say that maybe to get more depth you could add something up front, you know, it's obviously the building is a focus, but this uh, square here, you could add some texture, you know, to see what, what is this square, you know, so we know, oh, if you add some small texture, we know, oh, this is the lawn before the, before the building, you know, and then you can like continue with these a bit further, so we know, ah, okay, these are, these are vegetation, because obviously, I, I think you might be an architect, uh, I think, are you? the author, um, I could like assume from your style. And when you're drawing spaces, it's good for architects to, to just with a couple of lines and textures to, to um, tell what kind of materials there are. Because this is like your fast sketch of the place that you visited and you have to remember, ah, it was, you know, built out of this and that and the small textures can help you get. Okay, next sketch. All right, Sonia is disciplined <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so nice watercolor or oh, is it watercolor you can tell us what it is it's also might be acrylics they're quite thick colors yeah um, of a landscape so in this landscape we're basically it looks as if we are flying over it we're like birds I would say and um, when also, when, if you would be like eye height or if you're like flying, it's always good to have more, um, more layers in the landscape to, to be able to get a feeling of depth. So let's look at this here. You know, I'll, I'll keep drawing a bit then you can see what I meant. But Sonia, you can check out what, if there are any questions. Yeah. Um, do you have any questions at this point regarding anything that we forgot to mention or you're just observing on this sketch that we're seeing right now. You can also just shout out if, if that's your sketch. Yeah, do that. How to draw a goat, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> you really want to see that goat, right? Uh, Gaspar, you better make it quick. Otherwise, they won't see the goat. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so what do you think, Sonia? Did we do an improvement here? Yeah. Uh, so when we're talking about layers, so there's a video, the tutorial that we did on how to draw a landscape. And there we're talking about the, the layers or the foreground, the middle ground and the background. And what Kaspar is trying to create right now is the foreground. Even though we're up in the air and we're just flying above the landscape as a bird, you can still, where you're flying, well, where you're, where, oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, when, when you just look at the landscape, so the, the objects or the textures and the trees that are nearer to you, those have more texture and that's why more, more is to be seen here in the foreground yeah and this is but what i added so this is the layer one i would say oh let's write on this side so this is layer one the closest one this is the layer two this is layer three and then we have the sky layer four and what i just did is just added like sonia says 
the more detail to the front layer, right? Yeah. You see? Okay, what I would say is maybe in the fourth layer, it's not necessary to add such a cloudy sky because uh, there's no need for it. Um, because the third layer is pretty crowded as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, maybe the clouds are, uh, you could do a bit less, less clouds or just like less details, yeah. Clouds are a good idea when you need something really uh, in your sketch, um, but okay. not necessarily always. So I would idea. just read one uh, comment in between. Yeah. Uh, Asal said, and the sketch with the line, uh, what you did correct on the H line, so the horizontal line, uh, was exactly what I felt that should be done. So that's a compliment. Thank you. Um, okay. Mike. Uh, Michael, but what if they're drawing what they saw? Yeah, um, of course they are, they they are always drawing what what they saw. Um, but the thing is that, well, the the question is always, why are you drawing this? Is it just like because you want to have fun, or do you want to represent something? So what's the main reason behind your drawing? If you're just trying to make it like an expression for yourself, then that kind of sketch is okay. What we want to say always is your sketches are amazing as they are, but if you want to improve them, to give them that extra oomph to be more clear in their expression or in their meaning, that, that are the tricks that you can use. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so to that question, um, what what if they if that's just what they saw? Um, yeah, it can be, but but still, you always need to think about um, what's important to you and are all information in that space that you're trying to represent equally important. Would be my answer. This is a very good answer. I think it is true. So you're you're never um, when you when you draw or paint something. It is always an abstraction. There's always omitting information. Because this is what our brain does. When we look at the image, our brain basically filters out everything we don't need um, or everything we're not focusing on. And it lets us, um, let us focus on the things that are essential of, or, or of interest to us. So when we're drawing or painting, abstraction is always a great tool. Abstraction is your friend. I would say. Mm. Yeah, remember, abstraction is friend, not food. And, <laughs> and yeah, so um, use abstraction. Okay. Okay, so here, basically, you, you, I think most of you are starting to understand now that I'm, today I'm basically drawing horizons <laughs> and backgrounds. Because but it makes so much sense, right? It makes so much sense. Look at this. So I love these buildings here. I love the... It, it's probably... It's an amazing concept design for, you know a sort of civilization it builds or like a maybe post-apocalyptic uh, Japanese inspired something and um, when you add the background it immediately goes into uh, a context and a scale and yeah so what did you draw you draw the, the mountains in yeah. the background yeah. like some landscapes and what are the red dots so I imagine so if this building is red I imagine this city place has you know some more red buildings and if this is blue it has some more blue ones so this is what I basically added to mm -hmm. have to have the feeling of authenticity mm -hmm. in this place you know so okay. yeah just added a bit there and yeah. there you go amazing mm -hmm. okay does micron pigma work the same uh, when you sketch um, we have some micron pigma pens at home but we didn't test them out yet though we heard a lot of good a lot of good things about it so um, We'll report next time, maybe. Yeah, but one thing to remember, everyone, I think, is like, it's not the tool, really. I mean, it's, okay, I'm, I'm a bit like, yeah, I'm not so decided on this. I do have a favorite pen, and I love it, and I have the, oh, I think the camera went out. No problem, we're going to just switch, switch the battery. Oh, yeah, no problem. People, we just, the camera just went out, but you can still hear me, and you can still see what I'm doing. So let me focus on the sketch first, and then I'll tell you what about the, about the, Depends. You can maybe also tell uh, the, the story about uh, our professor where we always constantly tried to... Um, yeah, can turn it a bit more? 
like this? Yes, okay. perfect. You know, we, we always thought that if you're gonna buy the same tool that, that our professor has, then our drawings are also gonna be amazing as his. But that's not true. Yeah. So that's also something that, that's like a good story or anecdote to, to what you were saying. Yeah. So um, with this one, what I'm doing is like, it based, first of all, amazing details. I love the drawing. I love the contrast. Wow, you really took time with this one. And bravo, really. I really love it. And what would I do in your um, place is consider a bit... Um, you know, before starting in, just, you know, take some time to construct what you're basically seeing. Gasper, how do you figure out where's the horizon line? Well, basically, horizon line is your eye height, right? So, if this was, a, let's say, if you, oh, the heads of all people are on the horizon, right? In the end of this stream, we'll show you where to go to get these perspective tips from us, or these drawing tips that we're talking about. We made, like, free PDFs that you can download with these tips and you can repeat them. So if this was a person standing here, let's say they're like leaning on, on this, so it'll be a, a short lesson in perspective, like their eyes would always be on the, pers on, the, on the horizon, you know? So what you would need to do here is, you know, you take a person as a reference, you don't need to draw it, but just imagine the person is there and always imagine then, I guess this door would have, would have to be higher Right, so this door would actually be this high, so a person would fit through. And you know, this these trees here would be they're about right, but you can see the water, it's supposed to be like basically also straight. And then this maybe is a bit too too uh goes a bit too steep into the background, so it has a feeling as if the floor is is um is uh, not straight. So all lines that are parallel in life, right, in real life. So this, all these lines that I just drew, they're actually, they're actually parallel, right, when you would look it in, in, or build it, right? And they all end in the same vanishing point on the horizon, right? So these two would, you know, this point is like beyond our page, but all of these would basically have to, um, have to, meet at the same point on the horizon mm -hmm. and this is like a, a small lesson in perspective and yeah we'll tell you at the end where to go to pick up those free pdfs that you can uh, learn something about this uh, perspective also a great way to look is like five tips for perspective the videos we did a while ago i think it's a it's a good resource i'm gonna find it and post it in the group yeah so this is all I have to say about this drawing. Love the style, love the details. The only thing I would do is, you know, if you would do it again, like take some time to construct the perspective um, correctly. Otherwise, the detail on that drawing was really nice and the contrast yes. was amazing as well. Okay, first of all, this, I love this view because this is something we've drawn as well already, right? Yes. Yes, it's in Slovenia, our home place. Um, so if the author is here, do shout out. Um, okay. Slovenia, this is where we studied. And we have drawn with our drawing professor this, I think, more many times. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful piece of architecture. And, okay, let's stay with the lesson I gave right now about the horizon. So let's imagine this is basically your horizon, some, something like that. Or maybe it's even lower. Yeah, like if this is the door a person should fit through. Like, you know, just imagine, just pick a horizon for yourself. Why I'm mentioning this, because all these lines here, this is like a field, basically they would, they would meet <coughs> in this horizon line, right? So um, I would like work on a bit on this, that this gets like a feeling of perspective. You know, they would have to meet maybe on the horizon or maybe if they're going over the hill, they, you know, they can still be parallel, but they need to be a bit more skewed. So I will just go in here and uh, try to draw something with black so you can see. What do you think, Sonia, about this one? Uh, what you just said is, is a good start, I think. Yeah. I would probably, when I would do the outline, uh, in addition, I would add some textures. Yeah. It's, if, you're, if that's your style, like the minimal style, with just a few fine lines, um, it's still necessary or nice just to give it a bit of additional information 
um, yeah, and work with layers. That's also a good tip. Yeah, so this the reason this field merged with your forest in the background is because you didn't have like a layer in between. And, you know, coming back to the question before, I think it was from Michael, like, what if you just draw what you see? You know, many times it's like, if you, many times you have to almost kind of imagine what you, not imagine what you see, but it's, um, sometimes you just have to um, deconstruct what you see in a certain way to bring it on paper. And there's definitely a layer of forest underneath, you know, the layer that's a bit closer or a bit darker. You just have to see it and, you know, sometimes even imagine it. You know, maybe. <laughs> okay, so I think this gives much more context. You said some some textures, right? Yeah. You know, some yeah. some textures on this field up front. Oh yeah, that yes. would be nice. Yeah. Because now you have this balance that we're talking about usually that you need to even out the 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 drawing. You know, you yeah. you need to have even if it's a composition, you need to balance it out, and yeah. this did the trick. Yeah. So perfect. The Architecture was perfect already. Just needed to add okay, some more. Okay, time is up. Content. High five. Boom. That Let's was go. awesome. Okay, we got a couple more to cover. Okay, so I think this is another one where. Okay, no. Okay, so this is the one from the uh, lesson we did together, Sonia. Um, I think last week. Last right? week, yeah, it was uh, aquarelle painting. Would you have a suggestion aquarelle. here? Um. Yeah, I would probably add some more uh, details in the foreground, mm -hmm. like a few grasses. Uh, I know this was like this. This was a pasture field on top of one mountain, and then um, where you see the the mountains in the background, there's also a small valley, um, and then we also have had like this cloud dead sky. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. A few grasses, that's, that's amazing. Maybe for this small path, in that case, I would probably add some small pebbles. Mm -hmm. You know, just to have like this feeling that it's something different. It's not a stream or water element or something, so that you just know it's, it's something solid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the edge is probably fine. Maybe I would just close it here a bit. Yeah, when, when drawing these things, it's a good idea to close them, to not leave white in between, if you don't want it to uh, look like two different things, you know, because this was all, let's say, hill with, uh, with grass, like with pasture. Can, and, you, yeah. can you also add here a few layers for the, for the, uh, for the forest? Yes. You know, they were like fingers just... And there was like Can shadow, you... right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is what I drew here. It's like always, if you, ha if you draw a forest from afar, it's always like a deep shade, basically, underneath. So you can go dark there, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, then probably I would, in this part, I would be a bit more transparent, a bit more uh, white. Yeah, there was a valley there, if I, I remember correctly. Mm. So I think we could do it more bright, right? And yeah. add this yeah. additional layer. I think there was like valley visible like this. Yeah. So if this layer suddenly, you know, gives you mm -hmm. more depth. Okay, I think we need to move on. But that's that's what I would correct first. And then maybe the, the mountains in the background that are almost white, I would probably give them like a really light gray line so that, that it's a bit more clear that they are just mountains in the background. Like this? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Love it. Like the colors. All right. Louis. That was from Louis. Oh, Louis. Beautiful thing. You see, there was just a, a couple of small um, details to add. Okay, now we have one that was already sent in last time, and I think we uh, it slipped by and we forgot to include it, which can happen. Yeah. We get a lot of these, yeah. and sorry if we don't include them. Um, just write us again and you yeah. know raise your hand and say, "Well, you didn't include yeah. me. Why?" You know. We receive them on our emails, on Facebook, on Instagram, and sometimes yeah. it just it's a, it's a mixture of everything. It it just slips. Okay. okay. Two minutes. Two minutes. Boom. Okay. Yeah. So I like this landscape. Love it. It's, are these cacti? 
this looks like cacti, right? Yeah. Oh. Also somewhere in the States, like, is wow. that another Arizona view? Beautiful. Anyways, so, um, and this is the painting of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think many of the things are already great here, I think, because the, fir the first layer is already visible, I would say, you know, and you have this rocks and everything, and then you have this green cacti layer. Um, I think what is missing, in my opinion, is like something in between here. Like this is a bit of an empty field. And uh, I, I would like look at the, pain, the image again and consider, yeah, the, you know, you could like differentiate before the mountains, there's like another layer. I think this is what one could add here. What do you think, Sonia? Mm -hmm. I think there is something that you can add right there and make, you know, make this big field a bit more differentiated in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it. It's already mm -hmm. gaining. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think otherwise the the cacti landscape could be a pretty hard thing to draw, right? Because it's like a really specific structure. Um, it's not like a tree where you have like this ah, this nice habitus and then you just have like um, this specific form. This is also very specific and. Um, so the, the question is, how do you also represent this specific type of landscape and still don't go overboard? And I think you did a fine job doing it. Um, and I'm just thinking about how could we even improve it. And maybe we can just, um, I would probably just define a, a few forms, a few cacti trees if we can call them like that, and emphasize them a bit more, and all the rest would be just like really... Um, yeah. Sort of heightened. Uh, it's gonna be a bit more... De uh, what do you call it? A bit more finely uh, uh, painted, depicted, uh, you know... Uh, we have we have three languages have, in our head. I, yeah, I have it on the end of my tongue. I if just... any German can, can translate zurückhaltend, then uh, please do. What is the Slovene word? Uh, Zadržano. Zadržano. Uh, what is it? Yeah, anyways, well, we we like we talk to each other in Slovene, and then we we live in Berlin, which makes us work and talk to others in German, and then we do our YouTube channel in English. And yeah, sometimes it gets out of hand. <laughs> okay, maybe we, we got some. Anyway, so what I did here also, I filled in the, you know, behind the cacti on this hill, you had a lot of whites and reds mixing. So I filled in the whites and just made it red. So the, so you, you could also do it vice versa and just filled in more whites and, you know, remove the reds. But this made the cacti more present, right? And I gave them a bit of a texture, so, you know, we recognize, especially this one here, right? Mm -hmm. We immediately recognize as a cactus, and now yes. we can read the landscape yeah. way better. Okay, detained or... Uh, detained? Yeah. Another word was reluctant. Yeah, do, the ca do some reluctant cacti. <laughs> okay. So... Another laptop. Let's move to the next one. I think this is also one that we skipped on last time that we did this, and we're gladly going to look at it today. Two minutes, go. Two more minutes, boom. Okay, so another one with a lot of cacti in the background. Where is this from? Who, who did this again? Uh, I think I remember, but I will not say it loud if you do not wish so. So the last sketch was from Anne, and she thanks for the feedback. Sure, Anne, gladly. Oh, this is also from Anne. Oh, okay. So, oh, that's why the cacti. Okay, so more cacti party. Anna. Sorry. Anna? Okay, so Anna, um, what I would say is we need this one to get also a bit... Ne, this is for Michael. Yeah, what? that's what I thought. Hey, Michael. Yeah, I was also a bit confused because I was... Uh... So, uh, this one, I think, as I said several times, like the foreground, like, blends too much with the background. Um, for everyone looking. So, this here is an area we need to focus on, right? Because this is an area that we need to we need to put something there to differentiate the hill from the whole uh, street here up front. 
Anyways, this looks like a beautiful place to live, Michael. If this is uh, somewhere around where you live, wow, beautiful. Um, is this also is this also in the States, right? And where is it? So I'm going to add here some more trees. Let me look at the image again. Yeah, so you see after that wall, that orange wall here, there are there's even some more shadow, right? So I think we need to add this to to be able to give depth to this image. There we go. So this was So this all is from uh, in Arizona. Also. That's his street. Oh right. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow, beautiful place to live. So look at this. I just added this small thing and already we can differentiate between the hill and um, the street. Mm -hmm. And then one more thing. So this is also for everyone. This is a pretty basic meta tip and I think you can all benefit from this. Um, when drawing trees, I said before, all on, I mean, not trees, but when drawing in perspective, like a view like this, I said, like, think about it, or eyes of all people would be on the horizon. So if this is our horizon, this is your eye height, this would be like a person, you know, walking, walking here. Maybe you're walking your dog, Michael, if you have one, or a goat, maybe you have a goat. There you go. <laughs> this is the first thing, eyes of all people, even if it's someone more in the background would be here, or if it's someone like very close, you know, waving would be here. And the trees are always above this line. Look at this. Right, because we are always able to walk over those trees, yeah. or and, under those trees. And pay attention what Gaspar just did. He did a nice outline around the tree habitus. So why is this important? Because otherwise it can get easily mixed together with, with the clouds, for example. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think our work here is done. Yes. Thanks for sharing, Michael. I love it. All right, let's move on. Oh, wow, beautiful. So I cannot read what, where this is. It's a setalu, set, set, or somewhere. Can you, is, if the person is with us, do tell us uh, if you are, you know, if you feel like speaking wow. up, do tell us where this is. But this rock looks amazing. Yeah, wow. right? I mean, this looks like our next travel destination. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, okay, Sonia, any tips here? Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. Wait, uh, I need a minute. Meanwhile. We don't have a minute, but still. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would, I would probably also add something here, like this line where, where the buildings and the water come together. I mean, this is also very important, very um dynamic edge that comes together and i would emphasize that part mm -hmm. um even though if the water is very nice and very still um you still need to have this kind of feeling that this transition this border this edge is important yeah, and that's why i would emphasize it yeah this is true good tip what and what i did is i added a shade here basically here behind the buildings um, because the, 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 the rock was kind of disappearing, you know, behind the buildings and we suddenly, it looks like as if it's floating about the buildings. So we need to have a feeling it's behind the buildings. And we do this by adding in some shading. Yeah. Right? So this is from Fred Federico, uh, a sketch from Cefalu, Sicily. Wow, great. Yeah. Sicily, we love Sicily. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you, Federico. Beautiful. So, um, awesome sketch. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Peter is asking, do you ever use grid paper in your own sketches? Um, I don't think we do. No. No. No, we do not. Um, the most important tool that I had in my first year of studies was probably a ruler, but because my professor was so fast and so amazingly gifted, with his sketching, I just throw the ruler away and I just tried to sketch as fast as he did. Um, so that's why I'm just using, usually if I use something that's like a, a pencil, if I try to uh, draw a specific straight line or something, I just put it on the piece of paper and then, then I draw the line or something, but no, uh, no grids for us. Okay. What are you doing right now? 
So basically, um, I think what I've been talking about today a lot is this, you know, adding of uh, layers. Yeah. So we needed to to give these trees on the left some shade, mm. and we needed to to give the horizon, the, like the, the place where the water meets the this beautiful karst landscape. Where is this? Uh, actually, it looks I think somewhere Southeast Asia probably. Um, uh, we needed to do to make uh, like a dark spot also f behind here to make to to have the feeling that the the, the this mountain top is uh, behind the rest of them. So let's yeah. look at it without, and let's look at it with. Okay. Yeah, I we think we need to continue. Yeah, beautiful sketch, and thanks a lot for sharing. I really like it. One more quick thing. I would um, maybe I would uh, move this. Move this. Uh, whoops. I would move this um, this boat a bit on the left, right? Because uh, I think um, I think uh, it's better like that in in a, in composition, right? It's on the third. Okay. All right. Next one. Okay, I love the style, right? Nice pencil style. Um, also here, a composition uh, perspective tip. I think well, basically what you need to do here, I like the different contrast and everything. I think what you need to do here, dear author, artist, architect, or whatever you just call yourself, this is, everything is very welcome here. Um, you just, you know, have to, maybe consider like how this you know these windows basically they would all if we drew a line they would all be the bottoms and the tops would all meet at one point on the horizon if this is our horizon so these windows would go would be like this and the roof as well you know it would go to the horizon I'm just drawing a bit of like helping lines I would just do an example on this front house but you I think you'll get an idea and then you have the roof and also Everything that would be parallel in 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 real life, whoops, would be would converge in one point on the horizon, uh, in a perspective. So basically, this house probably as well, you know. Nitin, is this yours? Uh, Nitin just wrote. I'm just learning. I don't know anything. Oh, but for not knowing anything, this is amazing. Like I like your style, and there's already so much richness in it, and I think. The, you will benefit most by um, you would benefit most by just adding um, a bit more principles of perspective and yeah we will tell you how to you will get you can get our PDF cardscapes and you know improve on that but yeah. you're already you're already on a good path yeah good job if you're still learning keep on doing it all right. One that we have here is a beautiful view of a city. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one it is. Maybe it's, I don't know if this is the Eiffel Tower here or it is another tower, probably another tower. When doing these kind of sketches, which we love, it's great to have a focal point. And I will do just a bit of adjustments. Um, I think this is what Sonia always, when she looks at my sketches, she always goes, yeah, but you have to connect them somehow, you know, just get get a dark pen and connect them, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. So we'll just add a bit of shading to connect this whole composition of buildings around here, right? There you see there already now we can recognize they're like a gesture. Mm -hmm. and then They are not like uh, lonely islands floating in between some lines. Oh, this is this is Paris, definitely. This is Montmartre. This is Sacre Coeur. This yeah, is yeah. Par the Eiffel Tower. This is the yeah. This is Paris. And again, the front of the buildings. Let's let's just add this detail. I would say, I would I would uh, put into shadow, right? Would you agree? Do you concur? Yeah. Sonia is skeptical. <clears throat> I mean. That, that's one way, that's the fast way, um, but since that's the foreground again, maybe that would be also a good good chance to add some windows, because when you're doing this mass of rooftops, you're not able to draw any details, because that would be too much, but here, 
as you already started, you could also add some windows or balconies or um, something like that. Um, just to give it a bit more texture and maybe that color would not be necessary. But that's your choice. Sometimes it's just good to do two or three sketches even and do one just in black and white, one in color and then the third one in textures. That's a great exercise that you can also do. Yeah, good point. Okay, let us move on. Okay, I um, can you just share one landscape? I need the feedback of it if the time is there. Um, what do you mean by that? Uh, did I miss anything when we were collecting sketches or something? Uh, yeah, if we uh, if we unfortunately missed any of the of the sketches um, that you send us, we're sorry because we get so many. But don't worry, um, I think we'll continue with this feedback rounds, right, Sonia? Are, I mean, are you getting value from this? Give us feedback and tell us if, if this is something that you, you like and something we should continue doing, then um, we'd love to hear your, your thoughts on that. Then we'll gladly, yeah. gladly do more of that. Or maybe just share what did you learn? What was for you the most important takeaway? Um, because, yeah, as Gaspar mentioned before, we won't have time to... Today we set a limit of one hour and we already crossed that. Uh, that's why I'm like so pushing Gasper all the time and he's still continuing, so he's not paying attention to that. Um, yeah, but we will try and um, to, to uh, see as many of your sketches as possible and if we don't manage it, we're gonna give you also feedback on the social media so don't worry. Um, and if you would like to just say or share one sketch that's most important to you, you can also say when you post the sketch uh, in our email or on any social media, you can also say this one is the most important one. Please, I would like to share this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, but we have uh, like four more to go. Should we? Yeah, I think if you have four more, then we will. You guys fine with that? If you're uh, if you're at this point, if you're too much in, and have to go do other things, completely understandable. We're glad to have you here. And if you want to go to, to the last couple of ones, which are more away from the landscape, but some more abstract ones and funky ones we got, uh, then stick with us. Yeah. So fruit, just to say two words about this fruit. First word, beautiful. Second word, shadows. Um, <laughs> Um, oh, I would ground them, you know, like without shadows, they're like a bit floating, but like with an actual shadow and shading, they, you know, actually become more grounded and I think um, also more realistic. So this would be, you already can draw beautiful fruits. So just, I think shading would be the next step for you. Right. Yeah. And it also, it almost demands the shadow, right? And demands. the shade. Because it's a still life, you want to represent what's there. That's almost realistical drawing or painting. So it demands it. It wants it. Yeah. Thank you. And we just got a super chat. So hearts oh, from wow. Berlin. From Thanks us. a lot. Thank you for your support, Anne. Now, Anne. Wait. No. What did I just do? What I wanted to do, Anne, is yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. And also said, I really love the feedback session. I think they are very helpful. And also Pamela said, I'm more engaged to drawing theory than before. Thanks for the lessons. Um, Gladly. Louise, this is an excellent way to improve. Michael, very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, drawing hands is probably one of the things that every artist fears um, and I love the way you took up the challenge and really drew a beautiful hand here. Mm -hmm. um, one small thing I would say is this knuckle here. Um, if you look at your hand like this, you know, take your hand and you look at the leaks, usually there is not such a strong bone sticking out of it. Um, a great way to learn anatomy is to think about the bone structure, you know, like how these bones are coming out here. And um, basically there is a, more of a knuckle on this side actually than on this side. So what I would do 
is uh, flatten this out. Look at it. Looks more elegant right away. There you go. Try it out. Look at your hands. Yeah. Um, I, I also think it's beautiful, you know, this uh, this ring, how it shines. I would therefore, you know, this is not my personal thing. I would remove these extra white lines from around the hand to be able to focus on the ring because now the ring is the only thing that's shining, you know. Mm. You see? Look at that. I mean, you already did such a nice sketch of a hand. I think they don't need this extra lines around them but when we remove them another thing appears like the ring starts shining then you wow. can add some more some more of this uh, some more of this to the ring and uh, actually make it well maybe yeah like that actually make it like this so yeah this would be like a quick feedback but yeah hands are also not my expertise but um, I think you did a great job Okay, we have a space landscape here, Sonia. A space scape. A space scape? It's a space scape. That's the next level, right? It's the next level. Okay, so, uh, space scape. Um, one important, so we have basically Earth and we have the Moon, I am guessing. One important thing when doing, um, when doing, uh, let's say, planets, Moon, whatever. We are really sensible as human beings to what is actually round, right? So we immediate, immediately recognize if something's a bit off. So if you're drawing something that has to be round, like Earth from space, I think you should um, do your best to actually make it round. And I would actually, you know, help myself with a certain kind of tool. I don't know how you call this tool to make perfect circles, you know? I'm gonna Google it. I'm gonna Google it. <gasps> wow, Anna, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Anna. You know what's coming. You know, heart is coming. Just let me paint like this. Wait, <laughs> wait for it. Wait, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, Anna. You're working too slow. We're losing the moment. No, we're not losing the moment. Let's say, uh, let's say, bam. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now we have it. Yes. Thanks hearts. a lot. <laughs> We, it means a lot uh, to us that you are supporting us. Uh, it feels also great. Okay, so this is from Pamela. Uh, my goal this year, still beginner. Uh, but yeah, beautiful, Pamela. Really, I think you've made great progress since uh, you started sharing your work with us. And I'm really glad you did it. And look, you would just if you would consider this um, as circles, I think they would already gain a lot. This is point one. Second point, Sonia, would you have like a word to the use of watercolors that Pamela should... These are watercolors, I assume, right, Pamela? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you could definitely play more with color. So in a sense of sometimes you can use a bit more color and sometimes a bit less because also when, you, when you're in the space and you're watching our planet, you can see because of the clouds and the water and mm. also the surfaces that are full, you can always also uh, recognize the continents, right? So you can always play a bit more with with pigmented colors and then diluted colors. And that that's something that I would try to play even more a bit. So you can still use the same colors. I would just try, you know, the exercises that we did with the clouds. I would use wet on wet technique. And then I would really go first inside on this wet circular shape that should be our planet and I would go first in with with very strong pigments and I would just draw a few lines and then I would water them a bit so that the color or the pigment would get diluted and then I would go inside again and then I would work very fast and add additional col colors and they would nicely mix together and that would be much more like fluent uh, and yeah, I think you wouldn't get so much muddy spaces or muddy surfaces. Um, but otherwise, A, for effort, it's a really nice start. And um, Yeah, keep on going, Pamela. We already saw like, great uh, progress from you. Yeah. Okay, so circular things. Use the circle tool. The circle? The circle. Um, oh, I, I just... Two days ago, I was reading... What's, what's the word? 
for it, but Na I'm gonna Google it. Native speakers help us, or um, people that speak better English. The the yes. tool the tool that yeah. helps you make circular shapes. You know, the one you stick in and you turn around. The sixth. The sixth? Yes. Or is it the seventh? No, no. I think it's the sixth. Okay. <laughs> Let me check. Usually, if I'm not sure about the words, then I try to Google pictures. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, we have a nice one here. I really like this silhouette. And um, what I would consider doing, because you have a chance oh, no, here, um, you have a chance here to to also do it like in a different... Um, <laughs> it's not compass. In different um, layers. I mean, I've been talking about layers the whole day, but yeah, let's you know, let's let's go with layers here as well. So I think this white area down here, I think you should totally do it like the darkest one, right? Because now there are two ways of creating depth in an image. One is layers that you layer like light layer, dark layer, light layer, dark layer, and the other one is like darkest layer, a bit more lighter layer, then the lightest layer, and then the most transparent layer. This is also how one would see it probably in a realistic, realistic way. So which would mean that if we go from this from darkest to, you know, slightly darker, then I would add like here would be the, let's say, the slightly darker layer. Yeah. And this is how we will create a feeling of depth in this one. This is pretty roughly sketched out, but still, I think you'll get an idea. So now we go with the lighter layer. You know, I might paint over your, your beautiful figures, but yeah. So you see, now what I did, and this is basically very uh, rudimentary, but look at this. Now the sky, the lightest, right? And. Um, this is also creates a feeling of depth. So we have a feeling that the dark one beneath, beneath us is the closest one and that the rest goes slowly off into the distance. What do you say? I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find the name for the tool and then um, thank you, um, <clears throat> thank you, Peter. Yeah, I think it's compass. I tried to, to search for it and I couldn't find it. Uh, you know, when in need, nothing works. <laughs> Last two images we have for you today. So this okay. is a beautiful lettering artwork I really like and I like the message. Motivation is what gets you started and habit is what keeps you going. Wow. Yeah. I needed a while to read that, but I already practiced it now, so I know what it says. <laughs> When doing lettering work, you know, we've been doing this a bit, murals and stuff like that, or graphic work as well in our careers. Um, it's a great way to think about the outline of this whole thing. Let me show you what I mean. So if you would basically just draw an outline around this, you will see a certain shape emerge, right? Because the lettering and the texture is beautiful, right? But you want the shape to be harmonious as well. And now you can ask yourself, is this a shape, you know, I like? Like, is it, I would start with this shape, basically. And, or, or do I actually want a different kind of shape? And I, I would actually want it to be, you know, a bit more in and out and in and out and a bit more dynamic. This would be my tip to you. Make the outline first and then fill it with the text. I think this will help you because I think this outline is still a bit static. I think you can make it like I did it here in orange, a bit more dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. And you already yeah. know the lettering part. This is beautifully yeah. done. Yeah, so for the uh, for for one before, that was one from Louis. Mm -hmm. And he also said the, okay. the area mm -hmm. was waves coming at them. So She said. Yeah, yeah. she, sorry. Um, it was on Hawaii. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. We have a grand finale. You ready? <laughs> da boom! Wait. Yeah! Wow. So uh, this is an amazing uh, digital artwork. I love this piece. Yeah. Um, I like it as well. And you know, as with the last one, we usually like, you know, what are we supposed to tell you? <laughs> um, I love it. Um, I like the color. Okay, I like the composition a lot. I like the details. Um, 
It's dynamic. Yeah. One thing I would actually really add right now is like the color scheme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. this is the yeah. only thing that I could comment on. What do you think? Go for it. Let's roll. Okay, so I think that the purple here is a bit, um, is not har harmonizing with the, um, with the pink. I think you should like go for a contrasting color to purple. Which is um, what is a contrasting to? I mean, I, you could you could go green or you could go orange, I think, or you could go yellow. Yellow is the yeah, yellow is the complementary color to purple, so I think you should go with yellow here. Let's just try this out. I'll I'll see if this works. Um, not so sure it will, but let's try it out. Boom! You see this? I think this is actually what you want to what you want to have with your um, painting in terms of... Um, so with violet you would take uh, yellow, but we also were discussing that yellow is a pretty bright color and that's why maybe better version would be to, to get a, a certain shade of yellow that's not so bright because usually if you have like a very bright color you don't need a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the the uh, the color scheme is through that much well it's more harmonious yeah i think yeah i think yellow would do would do your work good but still you can as as i said you can use something that's not so strong so if you're here working with uh violets that are almost blue here in this context you can take some some sort of yellow that would not be so strong. Yeah, and this might also be a bit personal um, taste. I just think that um, if you use color theory, um, it might, you know, it pops out more on the yellow background than it does on a... And if you notice now with this kind of yellow, the face and this red color for the skin doesn't look so reddish. Yeah, here it you looks see? more reddish. Yeah. And here it looks more orangey, and it's some it it's more fitting. Mm -hmm. It looks more healthy. Yeah, I'd say beautiful. Um, I think this is a great one to finish up with. Yeah. All right. So let's switch back to our own selves. We're really glad that you joined us on this. I love doing this rounds with you. Yeah, and <laughs> thank you for sticking around for such a long time. I mean, we did a hour and 20 minutes. Yes. And um, I've been talking about the resources you can get to, you know, a lot of tips we've been talking. We already put on our so-called cardscapes, you know, linescapes, cardscapes, because they're cards that you can send to friends. <laughs> and there are these tips are on there. And... Um, you can, you know, you can buy them as cards, but you can get them also uh, as PDFs for free. Um, and go check them out. I think Sonia will just link you the page on our Gumroad page. And you can download, because some of these principles on perspective, on everything, is explained there. And for most of you who also, um, where I told about the landscape tips and perspective tips, check out our video, How to Draw Landscapes and already these tips for perspective that I think Sonia linked before. And gosh, but now is again the time to draw one more heart oh, because man. Peter <laughs> donated us a super chat. So thank you very much. Okay, wait. Um, wait, you're getting a special one now, Peter. This, is, um, this calls for a special treatment. Thanks so much. Now. And he's sorry for all the goat stuff. No, Peter, don't be sorry. Wait, wait, wait for it. Wait for it, Peter. Wait for it, Peter. The goat is coming. <laughs> there you go, everyone. Does it have like like a small beard? It has a small beard, of course. Oh. Ba bam. And you know, this will be like a Picasso style minimalistic goat, something you would see in a cave painting. <laughs> Peter said, I am living. Yes. Awesome. Bam. And boom. Screenshot now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Thanks, everyone. 
Um, we wish you, uh, if Easter is your thing, we wish you a nice Easter. Tomorrow we are taking a break from live streaming, mm. but we'll see you again on Monday at um, 7 p.m. Central European time, mm -hmm. 10 a.m. Pacific time, and I think it's 10.30 India? Yes, 10.30 yeah. India. That's All right. what we memorized. Okay, so uh, did we forgot to mention anything? I think... No, let's that they're great. Just, they're a great community. Yeah, I mean, you are very awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, we love you too. I mean, thank you for just hanging out with us and supporting us. Yeah, it makes a lot of fun doing this this yeah. with you. Yeah, go to the Facebook group, share your corrected uh, drawings and paintings if you want to. We'd be thrilled to see them and join the community. So till next time, keep on drawing and have a great weekend. Exactly. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. <laughs>